Praise the Lord today. Hallelujah. Saints of the Most High God. Oh, we thank Jesus today for keeping us. We thank him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for keeping your children today, Lord, all of us. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you are the way, you are the truth, you are the life. No one comes unto the Father but by you, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, I pray today that you put a deep, deep, ever deeper and more deep, Lord, love in our hearts for you and for your way. That you would crush the flesh man, Lord, and just push him out of the way. Throw him down, oh God. And help us to love you with a pure heart. Undefiled, hallelujah. And just worshiping you, Jesus, today. And loving you and praising you. Oh, in the midst of struggle and trial, Lord, we need to cry out to you more and more. Your church. We are your children we are the sheep of your pasture. You are the chief shepherd and bishop. Hallelujah. You are the mighty God. And you care for your own. We thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your mighty care for us. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And Lord, I ask that you will just so touch each heart with fresh revelation this very day. Crush the devil. Throw him under our feet in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Today's message, Maranatha coming. Maranatha coming. We were listening to the song Maranatha by Ruth Fazel a little bit ago. Worshiping the Lord. And I just felt led of the Lord to look up the verse. It's only one place in the Bible. And it's 1 Corinthians 16, verse 22. And this is this is very, very powerful revelation to me personally because when I'm reading the word, I always try to remember to look at the periods and the commas and the semicolons and, and look at the context of what Paul's writing. And, you know, he wrote this letter to the Corinthians because these people were in the flesh. They were operating by their carnal mind. And Paul let them know that the, the carnal man, he cannot, the carnal mind cannot receive the things that be of the Spirit of God, that are of the Spirit. If, if we're going about in our Christian life and it's just in the mind, then we haven't even begun really, okay? See, we have to be in the Spirit. It has to be a spiritual mind, the mind of Christ. Because our intellectualism is not the Lord at all, okay? I mean, our thinking about the Lord and what the Lord is doing and everything else that we think, okay? It can be 180 degrees, and most of the time it is, opposite of what God thinks. That's why it's important that we walk by the Spirit only. Hallelujah. It says here, if any man love not, the Lord Jesus Christ, comma, let him be anathema maranatha. Now, did you hear that? Usually when we read this, we say, if any man not love not the Lord Jesus Christ, let him be anathema. And we insert this mental period right there, don't we? We put a period there, and there ain't no period there, okay? Let him be anathema. And then we say, Maranatha, come Lord Jesus. And this morning the Lord just touched me with this. If any man love not the Lord Jesus Christ, let him be anathema Maranatha. And, and, and what this is saying, the Holy Spirit is speaking to my heart. And he's saying, li listen to this now. If any man, if any man, he, okay, whether whosoever, okay, if any man love not, and the love there is phileo, to be, to be a friend to, fond of, to have affection, okay, love not the Lord Jesus Christ, let him be anathema maranatha, and anathema, it means, a, it means accursed, excommunicated, okay, and Maranatha 
This is, this is what really blew me away. It means our Lord has come. Our Lord has come. Maranatha, an exclamation of the approaching divine judgment. Hallelujah. Because people were in the church in Corinth, and people are in the church today in Houston and Dallas and all over all the cities in America who are not a friend of Jesus. They do not love Jesus. They love their self. They love their programs. They love their money. They love their toys. They love other people, but they don't love Jesus. Let him be anathema maranatha. Jesus is coming to judge. See? Maranatha. The Lord, our Lord has come. An exclamation of the approaching divine judgment. Maranatha. See, do we know when we say Maranatha, come Lord Jesus, we're saying come Lord to judge. Come Lord to judge this wicked world who is denying you. This whole religious system of man, whether it be Christianity or Islam or Hinduism or Buddhism or Zen or Rosicrucianism or Masonic Lodge, whatever it is, anything, all these religions of men, they're not worshiping the Lord Jesus Christ in spirit and in truth. They're worshiping the devil. They're worshiping false idols. They're worshiping their selves. And the Lord is coming to judge. <clears throat> he's coming to judge. And he's going to judge. And he's already judging. The Lord has shown us many times through his word. Let me turn over here now to 2 Thessalonians because this is vitally important we remember this. We are his children, saints. And he's using us in this earth today. He's using us He's working through us all in the lives of people. Amen. Hallelujah. Paul said here, verse 3 of chapter 1 of 2 Thessalonians, We are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is meet, because that your faith groweth exceedingly, and the charity of every one of you all toward each other aboundeth. Listen to that now. The charity of all of you. The agape abounds one to another. Oh, hallelujah. What a wonderful fellowship that must have been. So that we ourselves glory in you in the churches of God for your patience and faith in all your persecutions and tribulations that ye endure. I'm telling you a true manifestation, a true manifestation in an assembly of believers where the Lord is truly manifest in the life of his people. One to another, submitting one to another in the fear of God, loving one another. That brings from the world, it brings from the world persecution. Oh, hallelujah. He says, let me read verse 3 again, so that we ourselves, I got to, I mean, yeah, verse 3 and 4. Verse 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 9 and 10. That's one sentence. This is verse 3 through 10 of chapter 1 is one sentence. So it's one context. Now let me read the whole thing. <coughs> we are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is meet, because that your faith groweth exceedingly and the charity of every one of you all toward each other aboundeth, so that we ourselves glory in you in the churches of God for your patience and faith in all your persecutions and tribulations that ye endure, which is a manifest token of the righteous judgment of God, that ye may be counted worthy of the kingdom of God, for which ye also suffer, seeing it is a righteous thing with God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you, and to you who are troubled, rest with us. 
when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels. Oh, hallelujah. Rest with us when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power, when he shall come to be glorified in his saints and to be admired in all them that believe, because our testimony among you was believed in that day. You see, it's when he shall come to be glorified in his saints. When he comes to be glorified in us. Hallelujah. We are his saints today. Now, talking about these people who obey not the gospel. Okay? They don't love God and they obey not the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. See, because if a person says, and they're in the church today, they say they love God, then they're going to obey the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. They're going to obey it. They're not going to give mental assent to it only. They're not going to say, yes, that's true, and then not obey it. They're going to obey the gospel. But when they don't obey the gospel, it says right here in flaming fire, verse 8, taking vengeance on them that know not God. See, when you know God, you want to obey God. You want to be obedient to him and walk in his way. Amen. Hallelujah. In flaming fire, Jesus is coming. And to you who are troubled, rest with us when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power, when he shall come to be glorified in his saints. That's when it's going to happen. And to be admired in all them that believe in that day, because our testimony among you was believed. <coughs> In verse 11 and 12, he finishes out the chapter here. Wherefore also we pray always for you, that our God would count you worthy of this calling, this calling to go through trial, to go through tribulation, to go through the suffering with Jesus. Hallelujah. And fulfill all the good pleasure of his goodness. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord, do that in us. And the work of faith with power that the name of our Lord Jesus Christ may be glorified in you and ye in him according to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm telling you right now, Jesus is coming. He's coming to judge. Maranatha coming. Those who are anathema. Maranatha. I'm telling you right now, we need to all be crying out to the Lord every day, saying, Lord, examine me. Examine my heart. Search me, O God, and try me. See if there be any wicked way in me. Lead me in the way everlasting, O God. Lord, mold me and make me after thine image. Lord, do your work in my life. Lord, if there's areas in my heart and mind that, that I refuse to reveal to you, or Lord, I, I'm just holding on, or whatever it might be, Lord, you just come and you make all those things be brought to the light, Lord. Hallelujah. See, so that the Lord can just do away with all that flesh. Hallelujah. So that we will be his instruments, gold and vessels. Hallelujah. I know there are so many gold and vessels out there. We've been in the fire so long. Hallelujah. Listen, it's a fire, but it's a purifying fire. Hallelujah. And the Father is glorifying His Son in us. Oh, hallelujah. That's what's taking place. And so all we need to do is keep pressing in. Amen. Keep pressing in no matter how you feel. No matter how you feel. It doesn't matter how we feel physically. We have to be obedient to the Lord. Okay. 
Hallelujah. And there are days when I don't feel very well physically. Okay? But I'm telling you right now, the Lord knows the reason for it. The Lord knows the purpose that it serves. Hallelujah. <coughs> Excuse me. And I have to say, thank you, Jesus. I have to say, oh, Lord, I love you. Thank you. And that's what we all must do together. And let us remember to lift each other up in prayer because it's so vitally important that we do this. You know, when I read this this morning, saints, it just really blows me away because God is serious about letting people know that Jesus Christ is coming to judge. And judgment begins in the house of the Lord. There are so many Christians we see today who really aren't in the good of the Holy Spirit that God wants them to be in. There are Pentecostals out there who are so enthralled in their way of doing church and everything else that I, I, I'm just afraid that many of them just miss the Lord. Just miss Him because they're doing their man-made thing. You know, the way 20th century and 21st century Christians have church. Uh, this is how we have church. One time I remember when the Lord told us, he said, y'all come out of these churches. He said, don't go to no church. But we were looking. We were looking for a church to go to. Looking for a church to go to. This was the mentality back in the 90s. It was 96, 97, 98. And the Lord said, you are the church. That's right, Lord. We are the church. See? But we went to one fellowship and we walked in. They, boy, they greeted us at the door. They said, come here and we'll treat you so many ways. You're bound to like one of them or some of them. <laughs> we'll treat you so many ways. You're bound to like some of them. Now, this is what they said. And so we walked in and we started looking at the pictures hanging on the wall. And they had this drawing of Jesus. It was a painting. It would be like Leonardo painted it or some one of these Renaissance artists painted this picture. And it was a print. It was hanging on the wall in the, in the uh, foyer of this church and it was Jesus sitting on the steps and there was a little child standing in front of Jesus butt naked okay and his little tallywhacker was hanging right there all right now this is what they're putting this is what it is okay man it's all about man hey it's about us we feel good oh we're having fun today oh it's church and we're having fun oh yeah and all week long struggle Wondering why is this happening to me? Why is that happening to me? Gossip, slander, lies about those who are true. All this stuff during the week. Phones ringing off the hook. Emails going back and forth. People lying about one another. Hating one another. And then Sunday, oh, we all just love each other. Oh. See? And the Lord sees through it. He's got eyes of fire. He's got eyes of fire. He can see everybody's heart. He sees all of our, all of our hearts. And he's coming. And I guarantee you right now, we don't want to be in a place when he comes. Where we're not loving him. Where we're not loving you. And helping you. Okay? I don't want to be in that place. Sharon don't want to be. We don't want to be in that kind of a place. No, we want to be in the place of loving the Lord. Being obedient to him. Loving him. Praising him. Glorifying him. Doing what he says. And allowing him to have our vessels and use them for his glory. Whatever he wants to do. Wherever he wants to do it. Hallelujah. See. Because it's not about us. It's about Jesus. It's about him being glorified. Hallelujah. And he's coming to be glorified in us. See, that's when the judgment's going to be taking place. When he comes to be glorified in us. The judgment goes forth. But let me tell you something. The devil hits back. All right. The devil will hit back. But guess what? We persevere. Amen. Because of the blood of the lamb. And the word of our testimony. We overcome the dragon. Amen. We, we persevere because of the grace of God. Hallelujah. See. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Paul said in verse 23. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. You know, this is so beautiful. But but when you look at that verse 22 again, I want you to get your King James Bible today. I want you to get you an e-sword. If you don't have e-sword, get e-sword. 
you go to eSword.net. E, put a dash, sword.net, and you download eSword. And then you look up these words, and you look at, let, let us be paying very careful attention to the, the punctuation in the scripture. Every dot, every comma. Because see, the sentence is this. If any man love not the Lord Jesus Christ, comma, let him be anathema maranatha. Oh, man. That is powerful. That hit me today, this morning. And, and, and it causes me to say, Lord, search me, because I want to be loving you, Lord. I want to be your friend. I want to stand up for your honor, for your glory, Lord. Amen. And this is what we need to do. And, and just keep pressing, pressing, pressing in to the Lord. And never give up. He is coming in flaming fire. He's coming on a white horse. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you for this word. And I do pray, Lord, it will penetrate all of our hearts, Lord. Help us to keep our focus upon you today. Oh, Lord, I pray for everyone going through the trial today, Lord. We're going through the trial, and other people are, Lord, in the body. Lord, we pray for your strength to be upon us, your infilling of your grace. Penetrate us, O oh God. Fill us, quicken us, O oh God, by your Holy Spirit that you used to raise Jesus from the dead. Hallelujah, Father. And Lord, crush the devil and throw him under our feet in Jesus' name. Amen. Glory to the King. If you need prayer, you have prayer requests, you send them our way. We'll pray for you. We love you. We care about people. We care about you. If you don't know the Lord Jesus, you can just cry out to him. You cry out to Jesus with a broken and contrite heart. Tell him you don't understand. Tell him you don't know. But tell him you want to know. Ask him to reveal himself to you. If you don't know him today. And you'll know him. When you do it with a broken and contrite heart, he will reveal himself to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can write, Behold a new thing at yahoo.com. Behold a new thing at yahoo.com. Hallelujah. The Lord bless you, keep you, make his holy face to shine upon you. The Lord our God lift up his holy countenance on you and grant you peace. The Lord be ever so gracious to you today. In his name, authority and character be in and upon your life today. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, hallelujah. You have a blessed day and a blessed weekend. And praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Pass the ammunition. Let's just keep praising him and keep lifting up each other in prayer today. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Amen.